Hi there, I'm Shivani with Go Engineer. This webinar covers motion in assemblies, and specifically this robotic arm. I'll create animations two ways. One way is a method new to 2016, and the second way is for previous versions. I'll also show some motor sizing with the motion study, as well as other motion tips. If these are the droids you're looking for, then let's get started. First, notice the general trend of mates in this assembly. They are majority hinge and angle mates, rather than free-moving concentric mates. This is important for the new animation technique. It's called Mate Controller, and again, it's new to 2016. It controls specific mates in the assembly. This button here gathers all the angle, distance, limit angle, limit distance, slot, and width mates in the entire assembly. Once we've done this, we can't free drag the entire arm via the graphics screen. Instead, we control mates individually via these slider bars. If at any time you move a mate in a way you don't like, you can reset the position. Now, the idea is we create different positions like a series of snapshots representing the full functionality in the arm. What I'll set up for position two is the arm extended out in preparation to pick up something. It may not be immediately obvious to me which mate controls which pieces of the robot, but if I select the various mates in my selection box, I see a dynamic highlight showing me the faces that make up those mates. This makes it easier for me to tell that I want to modify the upper arm angle mate. Now earlier, I said we use the sliders, but if we click the lock symbol here, we can free drag the robot arm while adjusting solely that mate. I could also type the final angles as well. The robot looks the way I envisioned, so I'll save these updates. I'll add in a third position of the gripper twisting, but ending up in a very similar position to where it started. I'll come back to that point later. Now, after creating these three positions, they'll be saved in this dropdown, and at any time we can toggle between them. Since I want to have the robot arm return to home, I'll set it at position 1, then choose Add Position. Position 4 is an exact replica of position 1. Finally, the tool has automatically been creating an animation between these positions, which we see here. Notice that the gripper rotates into position and then rotates back to 0 as it returns to home. This is unnecessary, but it also proves the value of the angle drives the motion. Now this was a mistake to have it rotate back, so I'll go back to position 4, correct the angle, and then choose to update the position. As a final comment, if at any time we realize the positions we've created are out of order, we can arrange them using these buttons here. When it's perfect, we can save out the animation here. However, if I want the animation a little fancier, perhaps with components hiding and showing or with the camera views changing, then we have to take this animation into motion studies. Luckily, the wizard easily imports the make controller into either key points or motor analysis using the animation wizard. Now let's see some tips with animations and see how to add a new position using motion studies. This is the classical way to create an animation. First, I recommend turning off orientation, camera views, and automatic key creation as you begin. Camera views are better added in last, after the robot motion is perfected. Secondly, I always take advantage of the tree filters to clear up the clutter. This filter here shows me just the things in my tree that drive the motion. Thirdly, I recommend not trying to free drag the assembly like so. It is very easy to get the arm in strange positions. Okay, let's create this new position. Set the gray bar exactly where you want the new position to be. Don't move the gray bar until you've finished making the new position. Now to create it, I recommend temporary fix slash group, or if you're using SolidWorks 2014 or earlier, fix or float in the right click menu. The core methodology is we are preventing fixed components from moving, thus giving us more control over the robot arm. I recommend always starting from the components nearest the base and working the positioning up from there. 
Also, notice how the tool works. Fixed components become blue, and the other components are draggable after we select the button Fix slash Group. Now the arm is where I want it, so I go to my mates and add new keys. This saves the position of that angle in the key. The blue bar between the two keys tell me the arm is moving between these two positions. If there's no bar, the arm is not moving. Let's see how this animation turned out. Hmm, did you notice that error? The base never rotated. Why not? Well, I never added that key motion into the tree. I'll have to toggle back to the full mate listing to get that. If I add the new base position, however, it creates a blue bar across the entire animation. This is a mistake, since I wanted that rotation to happen just within the last two seconds. So now what do I do? We can drag and drop keys throughout the animation, as well as replace keys with new positions. As I'm dragging these around, notice that the yellow bar behind the keys disappear. This is a visual representation of suppression or unsuppression. It would mean the base twist mate was suppressed throughout the entire animation. Making sure that's on, the blue bars are where I want them, produces the animation of the robot arm that I was going for. Last section, we will see some motor sizing and common issues with interference in camera views. For motor sizing, we need motion analysis, available through add-ons. I've set the robot at a position that will cause collision if the gripper rotates. By default, components pass through each other while still reporting interference. We want to see the effects of the collision. Using body contact, we can do that. We always must select the entire body, not individual faces. Also, since we're sizing the motor, we apply that approximately where the motor is placed realistically. This causes the gripper to spin about its axis, and the axis of rotation would be defined by whatever face was selected in this direction box. Let's see the calculation. The gripper appears to bounce off the base, but then it obviously starts interfering later on. In case we didn't notice this, there is an interference check supplied with the study. We have to select which components we want to check interference between. We can select more than two. Clicking Find Now begins searching the animation for any interference, and I see that the first instance occurs here. The interfering pieces are highlighted a red, and in this case the interference is very small. Now I set these solid bodies so they wouldn't interfere, yet they do. Especially later in the calculation, so how do I stop that? By editing the body contact, we stop these parts from interfering. By default, this body contact set the material of these two bodies as acrylic. If you're noticing a lot of interference, then choosing steel dry is a better option. This is because of the elastic properties associated with the metal. For large objects, it's better to set these yourself. When we see components interfering, it's almost always because of this penetration value. 0.1 millimeters is a better default for small components. For large robots like this, we need a larger number to prevent interference. Now, when I calculate the motion, as soon as the gripper collides with the body, it bounces off rather than interfering. This captures the true motion more realistically. Now assuming I trust my results, I can now look at the motor reaction forces using the motion plots. These provide results over time so we can see the torque applied to the engine during the collision. In other scenarios, we could see how much motor torque was required to lift a heavy object, and results like that could help us size our motors. Now to close off the webinar, I had a follow-up question regarding camera views. How do we edit these once we've created them? I personally think making use of automatic keys and our gray bar is the best way to adjust camera views. First, place the gray bar precisely where you want to set the camera view to be. Then set your automatic keys and camera orientation on. As I rotate and zoom, the keys at this gray bar are adjusted and automatically create a transition between the original camera view and this new camera view. Now if any time I want to adjust this, I just place my gray bar back over that key and either right click replace key or let the automatic key 
change that for me. Thank you for watching this webinar on motion in robotic assemblies. If this webinar didn't answer your questions, leave us a comment and I'll get back to you. Or check out our other motion and simulation videos on our GoEngineer knowledge base at kb.goengineer.com. Mm -hmm.